well, uh, hello everybody. Um, to contribute to these links with geometry and like uh, quantum gravity and uh, whatever, like I will, <laughs> I will talk about like uh, some links to category theory and uh, cohomology theories uh, with probability and uh, particularly with the information theory. So I will introduce this. Uh, like. Uh, so this is the plan, so I will like present the characters, like what is cohomology, what is information. Then, well, the trivial part for you, because I will talk about observables and probabilities and whatever. And then I will try to explain how all this is related to, to entropy at the end. So, uh, in geometry we like uh, this thing called cohomology because it uh, allows us to distinguish the shape, the shape of things. So, you can distinguish a, sphe a sphere from a torus because there is a hole inside, but there is a mathematical way, an algebraic way of saying that there is a hole there. And basically it's the fact that these cycles A and B that are uh, drawn there the are not the boundary of anybody. So they are like cycles that are no, no boundaries. So they are like uh, non-trivial cycles. And uh, so the notion of shape at the end geometry is related to these cohomology theories and that are stable under deformation. So we can change the structure. We can, I don't know, transform this sphere into an ellipsoid. But basically in terms of cohomology, we have the same. So now we'll try to define a cohomology for information theories. So that's, that's the purpose of the thing. Uh, so I have to introduce also what's information theory. And uh, the idea is like Shannon introducing the 48, uh, this uh, way of measuring, measuring how much information it's in a, it's in a random source. So you think that like uh, there is a source X that can like transmit uh, N different messages. So the, those N messages there. And then you want to measure how much information is there. So you can like arrive to this expression, you know, and like you sum between all the probabilities and then you put the log of the probabilities and that's a measure of information. Why? Because here, if, if you know in advance the output, there is no information. And the idea here is communication. If you know the output, so you don't have to transmit anything. You can just hard code the message, you know, like, I mean, there is nothing to transmit. But on the other side, if, if you are like equally undecided, between all the possible outputs, outputs. So you have to design your communication uh, device to respond equally well to every output. So the idea at the end is related, like information is how undecided you are between the outputs. And the end, that, that's related also with the optimal ways of coding, etc. Uh, so the idea now is like uh, to try to put uh, the um, our problem in, the, in a setting that accepts like some algebraic approach. Uh, so the idea here is like we will consider like a family of possible observables. Like you can think that these are the possible sources of information, or maybe in a physical system, these are like the possible things that you can measure, etc. And then we will put an arrow between two observables. If like the observable x is a refinement of the observable like uh, y in the sense that the algebra defined by x is like finer than the algebra defined by y. So if you do that, you can start making like this kind of graphs. You know, supposedly there you have like a constant random variable and then you have these random variables that like just can distinguish one point, you know. So, so here by x1, I'm just denoting a variable like uh, that takes like certain value on the point one and certain other value value on the on the complement. But then I think that this value defines a sigma algebra and then I just like don't distinguish between two variables that define the same sigma algebra. So in the finite case are just partitions. So here I have three partitions, the partition that distinguish one, the partition that distinguish two, the partition that distinguish three. But then if you immediately what you have below is the atomic partition. Like, well, this is a very poor example, but easy to understand. And also I could remove like one observable. For example, maybe I'm not able to do the observation X2. Uh, and you can take like a physical example. For example, this is quantum mechanics. So, so you take like this uh, momentum, uh, these observables that are related to the momentum. Uh, and then you cannot measure like two of those at the same time because they don't commute. But you have this fourth observable, and that is compatible with the 
Lx, Ly, Lz. So at the end, you can organize in a graph like that the different refinement relations between your observables. And uh, once you have done that, uh, well, I, we will put a name to that. So the name of this will be an information structure. So an information structure will be, we say, a category that organizes all this data. So you have in the as objects of these categories, or, uh, as the vertices of the graph, the observables, and then as arrows, you have these refinement relations. And then we will assume that each time that you have a variable x, that this is a refinement of other two variables, you can uh, make this construction that is called the joint variable. So the joint variables, what everybody knows, but the, the idea is at the level of of partition, this is the coarser partition that is finer than the partition of y, the partition of z. So on x, you have this structure, and we will see this as a product. And in fact, it's the categorical product. here. And so those are the assumptions that we make on these structures. So we have this nice, uh, this is a category, you know? So it's just that you have to add here compositions of arrows and also identities, but well, essentially that. And and now, like, remember, like, what is like uh, entropy? So entropy of x is a certain like function of the probabilities on the partition x. So the natural space where this live is in the functions that goes from probabilities on x to the real numbers. So in certain sense, it's implicit in information theory that we, we won't fix like one probability, like that we, we want to play with families of probabilities, that possible probabilities that we could define on this partition. So I will call these families of probabilities qx. So on each x, you have a sigma algebra, sigma x, and you can like consider a certain family qx that we assume that is parametrized in some way. And then each time you have refinement, you, I assume that there is a surjective map that goes from qx to qy. So for example, a trivial example is like, you can take the, the thing we were considering before. So omega one to three, these are the partitions that discriminate uh, just one point. This is the atomic partition. So all the possible loss on the atomic partition, you can say that is this set delta two, like just like triples of numbers that sum one. And then if you have uh, if you have a probability on the atomic partition, you can always transform that to a probability on this partition, just like you sum the two components. And, and now we define like the last ingredient that is this functional model. So, so you have your category with variables. Then to each variable you can associate a certain set of probabilities. And now I said that uh, I want to consider like all the possible functions that take probabilities and give me real numbers. So in particular, like the entropy, the entropy of x lives here. And so I just defined that here. And there is a natural action of conditioning that you can define here. So you, you have a certain uh, function f that is defined on the probabilities on x. And you can condition this way, like this was introduced by Shannon too and you obtain a new of this function. So here you have an example, so similar. And the one of the features is all this can be extended like quite naturally to the quantum case. So you could consider instead of omega, you take like a finite dimensional complex vector space, uh, and then uh, observables are self tangent operators, and then there's also like a kind of notion of refinement because each observable defines a decomposition of the space in direct sum of subspaces. So if you have a better decomposition that refines the other, you put an arrow, etc. So the idea is like the construction is very universal. And well, that's the information part, the probability part. And now we want to like go to this algebra and geometry thing. 
so the idea is to define like a cohomology theory related to these uh, probabilities. Uh, and well, I won't introduce directly like the construction we did, but I will, did, I will do an analogy because it's easier. So the idea is, uh, for example, this is the RAM cohomology, the one of the simplest examples. You, you, you take uh, two functions defined on an open set of the plane. And you demand uh, if there is another function, like a big F, such that the gradient of that function gives you these two functions. So it's easy to see that uh, there is a necessary condition, you know, because if the function big F is uh, smooth, you know that uh, the, cross, uh, the cross derivatives like have to be the same. And this uh, gives this necessary condition. But then you can ask, is this condition sufficient? So not always, it's not always sufficient, uh, but you can prove, and well, this is just the topology <laughs> first, that if U is star shaped, it's radially convex, well, yeah, it's like you have this and it's a sufficient condition, you will find a big F. But if uh, U has a hole, for example, the plane with, with a hole in between, <coughs> so the answer is no. And then you can consider a simple example, you take these two functions, and then, well, if you assume that there is such f, you arrive to a contradiction because, well, yeah, the elementary computations. So, in fact, the answer depends on the shape of u. So, if u uh, is like has a hole, for example, we know that the answer is no. Uh, we exploit this fact all the time in complex analysis. So, uh, well, in algebraic terms, we will write this like uh, differently. So, we'll just say that we have the continuous functions that to the continuous functions, we can apply this operator that is called the gradient. So this give, give this vector, like take, a, take it as a vector. Uh, and then to a vector, we can apply this, this curl operator that maps it to, to this function. Uh, and we know that the if, we, if we take the curl of the gradient, that's zero. So we know that the image of the gradient is in the kernel of the curl. But it's not always an equality, you know, we, we just saw that. So you consider this, this that we call like uh, an exact sequence, and then you look at this group. So this is the first cohomology group of the RAM. So the kernel of the curl divided by the image of the gradient. So we just saw that if the thing is a star shaped, this is zero. Everything that is like the curl of someone can be written as the gradient of so the, everything that has curl equal to zero can be written as the gradient of someone. But if you remove the origin, so it's not longer zero, we have a counterexample. In fact, you can prove that it's equal to, uh, it's isomorphic to the real numbers power n, where n is the number of holes. So in here you, you capture like the, 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 the shape of u. The answer depends on the shape of u. Uh, so, well, you can do a general construction. So here I just like will say like there is a black box if you want. But so the, the, the black box is called topos cohomology. But, but, but the thing is you, you, you can put here your category of information, your probabilities, etc. And uh, this functional uh, model that we define and well you obtain a general construction for uh, cohomology so at the end like a sequence like this you no know, it's a sequence like the sequence we had before it's just that the sequence in fact continues so you can define cohomology groups as before you just the kernel of this map divided by the image of this one you, know, you continue so what happens if you do this in the observation uh, in this observation uh, setting so I will like uh, take again like the kind of uh, simple example. So you fix omega one to three these partitions like uh, the atomic partition here, and if you follow this like uh, general construction, uh, you have a characterization. A one cycle now will be defined by three functions: so f x one, f x two, f m, that satisfy these equations and others. Like, but the others are not important. And, and, and these equations are equivalent to say, for example, here, we, we curl equal to zero. So 
Well, won't be cool equal to zero, won't be something more complicated equal to zero, but it's translated to these equations. And these equations are functional equations. I mean, I just said that these things are functions. And, uh, but you can like, well, some people solve uh, functional equations, especially in Hungary. <laughs> so uh, they have been do doing that for 30 years, so they know like uh, some set of solutions. So uh, 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 they already know that if you find an, uh, an equation like this, like th this equation we found, the solutions to this thing are mu multiples of the entropy. So here uh, I selected a very simple example. It's just like the entropy concentrated in, in two elements, but, but well, uh, you can do it in general with, uh, uh, if you are like <laughs> patient enough. Uh, so at the end, what's the moral of the story? In fact, it's a fairly general moral that it, 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 the information cohomology, this general thing that we can define from geometry, whatever, ha in a lot of situations, fairly general, is one dimensional. It's a one dimensional vector space. And in fact, it's like uh, composed by all these real multiples of the Shannon entropy. So just to conclude, because, well, maybe I don't have a lot of time, but, <laughs> but uh, the idea, well, that the idea is that you, we can uh, use this maybe general approach, categorical approach, to, I don't know, see probability a little different. For example, we, and this is an idea of Gromov, we, can, we could take like the observables as the primary thing, and just like the omega as a kind of model, like a selecting of a base for a vector space. But, but it, omega is evidently nothing like really inherent to probability, because in fact, in a lot of situations like limits of, uh, limits of random matrices, whatever, you, you change omega on the way. So, so in fact, you could think that you have just observables, and the observables are kind of finite sets with the possible outputs. And then, well, for this output, you have like all the two outputs that are like living in another observable, etc. So you, 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 f you make a category of observables, and then you try to plug uh, omega that match all those observables, but the construction is not unique, and you could study like different constructions like that, etc. Um, well, maybe the perspective of, of this is like try to understand well, what's the geometry behind this? How, how can we like obtain uh, like some things useful for probability theory and like the main guess is to obtain like uh, higher information functions like uh, ways of seeing like how many information is shared between three four like 100 variables and try to to like find that in the higher cohomology groups that we can define with the same approach so well, uh, those are the, the papers, like the paper of uh, Bene Kahn Bodo, that is like the introduction of the concept, and the paper of Gromov, that is this categorical approach to probability too. Well, thank you. So thank you. Well, thank you. maybe there's a question. Uh, yes, questions? No, if not, let's thank uh, Jan Pablo again. Thank you.